Now I know what you're thinking. How do you know what Zebek's devil fruit is if we don't know anything about him in the first place? Well, I stumbled upon a brand new discovery of Oda's inspiration for Zebek and all the characters surrounding him and is based off real life mythology. And by the end of this video, I guarantee you this will be the most accurate prediction of not only Zebek's character, but his devil fruit. Now before we explain Zebek's character and devil fruit, we need to go back in time and figure out how he even made this discovery. In a previous video of mine, I talked about how Luffy's based on Hanuman from Hindu mythology. Even if he doesn't have the devil fruit of Hanuman, I am 99.9999999% sure that Luffy is at least influenced as a character by Hanuman. Hanuman can stretch, enlarge parts of his body, is immune to electricity, has a scar on his chest, born from a monkey family, is the son of the Lord of the Winds, etc, etc. You get the point. But this is a foundation to Zebek as a character because one of the fathers of Hanuman is a god named Kesari. But before we move on, it's very clear that Oda takes inspiration from real life mythology, but it's not always one to one. For example, the octopus that died going close to the sun in One Piece wasn't named Icarus, but his master was. Either way, Oda was inspired by the story of Icarus and decided to switch some things around. But anyways, Kesari was one of the fathers of Hanuman. Rather than Dragon being based on Kesari, Oda chose Garp instead. So Kesari was born as a Vanara, which is a monkey family. Clear similarity here because Garp is in the Monkey D family as well, with him being the grandfather of Luffy. Kesari was also known for being brave by nature and a quote unquote chief of the Sugriva force. This is another big similarity because Garp is the chief of the marine force and more specifically the hero of the marines. Now in Hindu scripture there's an interesting story about Kesari that is a direct reference to the God Valley incident. It says that the great Vinara named Kesari killed a Rakshasa named Shabba Zadana who was continuously persecuting the holy saints. This all took place at a sacred shrine near the shore. Kesari confronted this monster and hit him forcefully with his fist. There was a great wrestling match and Kesari was finally successful in slaying him. Now let's break this down so you can be mind blown. So Kesari found a Rakshasa named Shamba Zadana and a Rakshasa is a type of demon or goblin in Hindu religion. Rakshasa and rocks do share a syllable but most importantly they both seek power and lack divinity. What I mean by this is Zebek formed his crew not out of love but to become the king of the world. He attacks many locations and left mass destruction in his wake to assert his dominance. So we can conclude that Zebek's goal was power, not saving the world and freeing people like Luffy. And as far as lack of divinity goes, Zebek participated in taboo practices and quite literally killed world nobles and their slaves. Totally contrasting from someone like Luffy who at least punches them, but this guy literally killed them. Now continuing the legend, this demon was continuously persecuting holy saints. This parallel is pretty obvious because celestial dragons in One Piece do consider themselves gods or holy saints. And with what Sengoku said, Garp had to protect these holy saints saints from Roxy Zebek. We're tying this in with Zebek because Zebek was killed at God Valley. God Valley, Sacred Shrine, it's not that far off. More specifically, the demon died at the shore of the sacred shrine. If we double check the anime, it's clear that Garp fought on the shore since throughout the episode, there's plenty boats in sight, and I don't think boats were in the middle of the mainland. Furthermore, Kesari hit this monster forcefully with his fist. When I first read this, I was completely sold on the idea. Like come on bro, his fist? It's not like he was slain with a sword or hit by a hammer, like he was defeated by a fist. The obvious correlation here is Garp's epithet of Garp the Fist, there's nothing more for me to add on this one. And the final point of this legend is that Kesari ended up victorious in the defeat of the demon. So even though Garp needed Roger's help, we don't necessarily know the context of that. But either way, we do know that Garp won the battle, which is the whole reason he's labeled as the hero of the Marines. With that being said, we've drawn a real life reference between Roxy Zebek and a Rakshasa by the name of Shaba Zadana. And being that a Rakshasa is a demon, I strongly believe that Roxy Zebek had the Aki Aki no Mi, and in English, this would translate to the demon demon fruit. We already have Onis in One Piece being Kaido and Yamato, but Onis are a type of demonic creature. I highly doubt Kaido is related to Zebek, and it wouldn't be a reach to say that there's a literal demon demon fruit. But looking at Rakshasas in Hindu mythology, they're said to be man eaters. Yeah this is pretty dark, but with the themes of slavery and racism in One Piece, I wouldn't say it's a reach for Oda to use cannibalism for a villain. I mean Sengoku did say that Zebek participated in taboo practices, so maybe cannibalism is one. 
Now, some powers that Rakshasas have is the ability to change their shape at will. This allows them to appear as animals, monsters, and even beautiful women. The first thing that pops in my mind is Katarina Devon's Devil Fruit, because the power behind it is pretty similar. She can impersonate basically anyone, even down to their clothes. But the thing is though, we don't know if she takes on their power and how often she can transform. Maybe the Demon Demon Fruit allows you to rapidly and infinitely change your form and take on people's power as well. Now, as far as the Aki Aki no Mi goes, I did find something a little interesting. Apparently, there's a One Piece fan fiction from 2009 named World Revision, and it's made by Subrosion and Azur Fang. It has a Demon Demon Fruit, and since I agree with a lot of the attributes to it, we'll use it as inspiration. So how they classified it is it's a Paramecia with Zoan-like abilities. I agree with this because honestly, we've seen enough Zoans in the story, and I feel like a demon wouldn't be limited to Zoan-esque abilities. So in that fanfic, the Devil Fruit would give the person razor-sharp claws that are sharp enough to rend through materials as durable as solid steel. I do find this interesting because in Zebek's anime silhouette, his hair is pretty damn spiky. And just imagining someone with a demon demon devil fruit, I'd imagine they have wings and claws and all that kind of unsettling stuff. I don't imagine them to look all happy-go-lucky like Luffy. Another thing I agree with is that the Aki Aki no Mi would grant the person bat-like wings. This makes sense because it's proven that devil fruits alter the lineage factor of whoever eats it, meaning that if you eat a devil fruit, it's gonna alter your DNA. So if Zebek ate a demon devil fruit, he would get wings on his back, kind of like the Shandians, Yerush, King, etc. Now if Zebek did have these bat-like wings, I don't think he's going to travel Mach 10 and you know super high up in the air. I think it'll be pretty minimal, but just enough to be used in battle. Maybe Zebek can fly around shooting razors or sharp spikes at his enemies like Garp and Roger. Now we do know that it took two people to take him down and he even had his own era. Call this headcanon, but I believe to be a true top tier in terms of power, you need a great devil fruit and you need great hockey. I don't think that you can get hard carried by hockey or a devil fruit and if you can, Roger's the only exception assuming he doesn't have a devil fruit. Like he still needed Garp's help to take down Zebek anyways and on top of that, I think Roger will be surpassed by Luffy, a man with a great devil fruit and great hockey. Now with that being said, I don't expect Zebek to have this ultimate devil fruit or like a devil fruit that's completely broken. I think his devil fruit is pretty strong and he shared his knowledge of hockey with crew members like Kaido who ended up using Future Sight. Now we need to address the elephant in the room. Why is Zebek did not have the yami yami no me. Popular theory, I get it, but to me it makes absolutely no sense. I highly doubt Oda would go this direction, but if he did, I hope he understands the major plot holes that are end up being created. First of all, when Whitebeard and the crew found the yami yami no me, there was no real sign of importance or even interest from Whitebeard. And in case you forgot, Whitebeard was a member of the Rocks Pirates, so I think it's safe to assume he knows what type of power Zebek had. He didn't say anything like, oh, he had it too, or like, oh, this brings back memories. Like, Whitebeard didn't really care that he even found the Yami Yami no Mi. Now, let's just say for some reason, Oda didn't have Whitebeard say anything in that particular moment. We still need to address why Whitebeard clashed with Blackbeard's Yami Yami no Mi and still didn't say anything. Not a, oh, you have it too, or oh, just like Captain. Like, there's absolutely no sign that the Yami is familiar to Whitebeard. Or even Garp. Homie literally fought Zebek, so I think he knows what type of fruit Zebek had. This gets even worse, because after Marineford, the Godose mentioned that Blackbeard is the first person with two devil fruits. I think it's safe to assume they know what those two devil fruits are. So again, why isn't there a single sign or indication that Zebek had the Yami Yami no Mi? But I digress, Zebek having the Yami Yami no Mi would be a severe miscalculation by Oda and I doubt he would make that mistake. Something like the Aki Aki no Mi instead would create no plot holes and would have a direct awesome tie with real life mythology. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe so YouTube shares my channel with more people. And if you want to know why Zebek was an asshole who betrayed his crew, click the video to my side. Peace.